So a series of questions were asked with a general theme around them all. And the first question was, what's stopping the president from using his power to create an agency so that he can create more power? Another question asked, can the president make an agency whenever he wants for whatever he wants? And a third question kind of aligned with them with these previous two questions, why is it so hard to get rid of programs? Since the president can appoint them, should he not be able to just reorganize things? And I think all three questions kind of get at the heart of uh, a consistent theme about the executive branch regarding the bureaucracy and the power of the president over the bureaucracy. So I want to take a, just a few minutes to talk uh, about each of these questions and really kind of start with a third question regarding the president's power to reorganize bureaucratic agencies. Now, presidents certainly have the power to staff agency leadership. He has the, the power to appoint individuals who can make critical decisions on his behalf and be able to uh, provide the kind of leadership and guidance with the policies that the president wants to undertake. Now, a reminder that this power to hire comes with congressional approval, specifically the Senate. So any top position within a bureaucratic agency, a department, secretary, whatnot, has to gain first Senate approval. The president also has the power to fire, and that's an exclusive power. Uh, there was a constitutional court case regarding whether Congress could stipulate uh, if the president has the power to fire exclusively or if he needs to go back to the Senate in particularly and get approval for the firing of an agency head. The courts have ruled that the president has the formal power to fire exclusively for himself. Now, the president can bring about dramatic changes to reorganizing agencies, and we've seen this in the past history of the country. For example, in 1948, our current Department of Defense was actually two separate departments, one called the Department of War and the other the Department of the Navy. 1947-1948, Congress decided to bring uh, all of the military operations, along with creating a um, Air Force, into the Department of Defense. The Department of Education and the current Department of Health and Human Services used to be known as the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. All of those programs were combined at one point uh, by the 1980s. The department had been split into two separate departments, the Department of Education and the Department of Health and Human Services. And then most recently, the creation of the Department of Homeland Security. After 9-11, many of the current agencies were put together under this umbrella of what is now called DHS, the Department of Homeland Security. So there are opportunities to reorganize agencies. Presidents have limited power to be able to do it, but uh, it can be done and has been done in the past. Presidents do have the power to reorganize, but they have to have that authority given to them by Congress. And so the only time that the president can reorganize an agency is by going to Congress and gaining that approval. Now, any reorganization that usually creates a freestanding or a new what is called constitutional office will likely require congressional legislation and approval, meaning if the president wanted to break out, say, the Navy Department or the Air Force or the Army and say, you know what, I want a department of the Navy. Or better yet, for example, he, uh, President Trump has advocated for creating a space force, much like the Army, much like the Navy, creating something called the Space Force. 
Well, he would have to, if he wants to have that as a separate department, that would require congressional legislation and congressional approval. Because of the constitutional office, if that office is headed by someone appointed by the president and confirmed by the Senate, again, it would require congressional legislation. Now, these are basically limits on the president's power to reorganize the bureaucracy. But presidents do have some positive powers when it comes to reorganizing agencies. For example, presidents can delegate legal authority to agency heads, meaning if Congress has said, Mr. President, you are responsible for this kind of activity or this kind of program, presidents can give that legal authority to a current agency head and say, here, you need to uh, implement and execute this particular authority. Presidents also can propose staff cuts and program uh, budget eliminations. When the president puts together his budget and presents it to Congress, he can say, you know what, I want to cut this staff and move and put some staff into another agency, or I want to eliminate this program and, in terms of funding and increase the funding in this particular program. But the key to always remember is who officially creates the budget. It's first Congress, and then the president has to sign off on it. So Congress is typically the power of either reorganization or funding when it comes to trying to reorganize administrative agencies. Going back to our questions, who actually creates bureaucratic agencies? Well, once again, it is Congress that creates the bureaucratic agencies. They are the ones that delegate the power and authority to a bureaucratic agency. They are the ones that establish the various requirements for staffing, particularly at the upper level administration of the bureaucratic agency. They can allow for internal reorganization. So an agency can have the power to internally reorganize itself if Congress grants that and if Congress wants that agency to have that power. They also, they, Congress, also deal with funding the agency, particularly the number of staff and the programs that are being executed and implemented. And Congress is generally barred from creating an agency that it could appoint the leader of. This is an issue of separation of power between the legislative branch and the executive branch. And the belief is that Congress should be responsible for creating the agencies, but cannot appoint the leaders or create the agency for exclusive congressional control. Now, part of the issue is also to avoid presidential power growing too great. One of the questions was about why can't the president create an agency? Well, if he can create an agency, he can increase his power without congressional approval. And that's an issue of constitutional limitations. The final question was about destroying or eliminating bureaucratic agencies. And the belief oftentimes is, is that it is very hard to eliminate bureaucratic agencies. That typically you have citizens who receive an agency benefit or something uh, from a program. They are going to be the loudest supporters to Congress to say, no, you need to keep this agency. You need to keep this kind of benefit, this program, because it's helping me, particularly if those people are constituents of the members of Congress. Now, some federal agencies have been eliminated in the past. I want to give you a kind of current example. Uh, you notice me sometimes coming in to class with a teacup. I'm a tea drinker. And at one point, there used to be a board of tea appeals. Now, this was created by the Tea Importation Act of 1897. And the Board of Tea Appeals was a federal agency, and it oversaw the quality of tea being imported to the United States. 
Now, in typical fashion, tea growers in the United States wanted to have almost a monopoly on uh, the tea production in the United States. They saw threats from overseas tea plantations and farmers and producers. And so they advocated for the creation of this federal agency that would oversee the quality of tea being imported into the United States. Well, needless to say, in the mid-1990s, the Tea Importation Act was repealed and the agency was disbanded. And we have seen agencies be disbanded. More likely, you will typically see them merged or combined into another agency or into a, a separate department or perhaps within the department combined and merged that way. One study done in 2002 uh, noted that since 1946, of the 426 government, federal government agencies created since basically the end of World War II, over half of them had been terminated prior to 1997. And for most people, they don't realize that agencies typically could be terminated. They only hear about the growth of government. And what this study found was that a primary cause of agency termination was what they defined as political turnover. Basically, when one party controlled government, it flipped to the other party. That's typically when you tended to see the greatest number of agencies be terminated. When the government went from Democratic control to Republican control or vice versa. And so for the three questions that were asked, what's stopping the president from using his power to create an agency so that he can create more power? Well, it's part of the constitutional system that we have. We want limited federal governmental power, and particularly, we don't trust single individuals to have more power like the president. The question, can the president make an agency whenever he wants for whatever he wants? Typically, no. He has to go before Congress. Congress then has to approve. When President Bush, after 9-11, uh, sought to reorganize the government to create a Homeland Security office within the White House, Congress said, no, we want a formal department. We want you to bring forward a proposal and we'll work with you to create the Department of Homeland Security. And then finally, why is it so hard to get rid of programs? Uh, since the president can appoint them, should he not be able to just reorganize things? Well, since the president can appoint them, he can certainly fire the agency heads, but he can't just simply reorganize. Again, that's unless Congress gives him that authority. And oftentimes, yes, it is hard. We tend to hear more and more about big government, but government has been cut back in terms of both staffing and in the number of agencies, as we've seen through that 2002 study.